What is going on, Jet fans? Matt O'Leary back with another video. In today's video, I want to talk about Robert Sala recently speaking with Eric Allen of the New York Jets media team. What is he, the official team reporter? I, I always forget his title, but he puts out content for the New York Jets on their social media pages. And Robert Sala spoke about the New York Jets off offense uh, off season. Wow, I can't. Words are hard for me today for some reason. The New York Jets offseason, specifically on the defense. And I wanted to talk about how the New York Jets upgraded their defense at a couple spots and the philosophy, at least, behind the decisions they made. So let's first start with the Jets defensive line, where the two new guys are Javon Kinlaw and Leaky Fotu, who are new additions. They're both interior defensive linemen. And the reason why the Jets targeted those guys were, were really interesting to me because they're both different. Javon Kinlaw, while a bigger guy, 6'5", 324, is a pass rushing interior player, while Fotu is 6'5", 330, and he's a run stuffer. But let's listen to the reasoning from Robert Sala on why the Jets targeted those two players. First, it was awesome to get Sally back. Really excited to have him back in the fold, and he's a uh, another one of those guys that brings energy for days and just an unbelievable locker room presence. And he's he's getting more and more productive on the football field. To get Kinlaw and Fotu, we've uh, we've uh, we've managed to get bigger on the interior, which was important to us, but not at the risk of losing athleticism. You know, a guy like uh, Lecky, people don't realize he's got four eight play speed at 330 pounds, which Former is rugby player. ridiculous. And then obviously Javon, we drafted him in San Fran. All kinds of talent, tenacity, intensity, strength and power. I think he's gonna learn a lot from Quinnen. I thought it was interesting that they are putting a focus on getting bigger, but not losing athleticism. To me, that's the biggest proponent uh, of this New York Jets defense, or, or Robert Sala's defense in particular, is they put such a hyper emphasis on athleticism. Look at the linebackers. Quincy Williams was an incredibly athletic linebacker, and he was raw. I mean, his first couple of years at the New York Jets, there were really high highs and really low lows because he was such a raw athlete, incredible athlete, but they had to rein him in in some areas and they were able to do that. It took until his third year here where he took that incredible step and has been one of the best linebackers in football since the start of 2023. But you look at like that is a perfect example of someone that Robert Sala really likes. And Javon Kinlaw is big for a defensive lineman, 6'5", 324, but he's a good rusher because he has athleticism. And Fotu at 6'5", 330, you would think, oh man, like that that's huge. There's no way that he could be athletic enough to play in this defense, but he is. He has a play speed, a 4'8 play speed, which is really, really good. So it's interesting to see like, Again, the logic behind the decisions. Also, it's like so easy for whether someone like me or, or a content creator, a, a Jets fan, whatever, to just go, I want that guy because he's a really good player. And, you know, so sometimes it's as simple as just add good players. But when looking at styles that Robert Sala, specifically on the defense, Sala and Ulbrich and even throw White Cotton, the defensive line coach, into the mix on that is is their philosophy. Yes, Kinlaw is also, you know, a former first round pick from San Francisco, just like Solomon Thomas, who we know how much Robert Sala loves Solomon Thomas, but he also clearly loved Javon Kinlaw in 2020 and things didn't necessarily work out for Kinlaw, but it's not because he's not a skilled player. Injuries have really been a big factor uh, for Javon Kinlaw. So we'll see if he's able to stay healthy. It's hard not to imagine the New York Jets maximizing his potential and you can make the same case for for Fotu. He should be he's a younger version of what Al Woods will be in this defense. So, we'll see how those two guys who look, let's be honest, they're more role players than someone who's going to come in and be like a Hassan Reddick for instance, you know, that was a big acquisition. He's going to play significantly more than what Kinlaw and Fotu will, but they're going to serve a role and serve a purpose in this defense. The second thing that I want to get into today is Chuck Clark. 
I don't think Jet fans are realizing what how good a healthy Chuck Clark is going to be and how much of an upgrade he is going to be for this New York Jets defense at the safety position. First, let's talk let's hear from Robert Sala on what he likes about Chuck Clark and then we'll get into some of his stats from the last time he played and compare them to Jordan Whitehead. What about the safety spot? You guys decide to resign Chuck Clark and obviously you're going to pair him up with Tony Adams. Yeah, Chuck, um, the injury was so unfortunate, but during OTAs, he, he gave us just a taste of, of what it's like to be in his presence. And I'm talking about elite, elite character in uh, locker room presence. Obviously, the football player is, is already been established in our mind. He's a heck of a football player, uh, incredibly instinctive. He's got great versatility to him. So hopefully get him in that room where he's there constantly. You know, we're, we're excited about that tandem. Sala obviously really likes Chuck Clark and, you know, the Jets traded draft capital for him. So clearly Joe Douglas likes him as well. And it's sad in 2023, I was really, really looking forward to watching him play for the New York Jets because I believed that he was going to be an upgrade over, you know, Jordan Whitehead. And unfortunately, Chuck Clark gets hurt right away um, in OTAs. And the Jets run out Jordan Whitehead and Tony Adams. And they were a serviceable safety duo. I don't think anyone's going to you know, say the Jets safety duo was elite or like that was the strongest part of the defense. But they got the job done. But when you look at a healthy Chuck Clark versus what Jordan Whitehead's given you, I think Jet fans are really going to like how sure of a tackler Chuck Clark is, especially in comparison to Whitehead, because Whitehead, make no mistake about it, he is more of a playmaker. So if you're expecting like the same number of interceptions from Clark, that's not really his game, but he's not going to ha- it's not going to be the boomer bust plays that we saw very often from Whitehead. So in 2022, Clark had 70 tackles and a 6.6 missed tackle rate. So 6.6% of his tackles for his career, he is at 8.3. To put that in perspective for comparison to what the Jets had last year, or or really the last two years in Jordan Whitehead, in 2023, Jordan Whitehead missed 18% of his tackles and has a career 15.6 missed tackled rate. Again, that's not to say that Chuck Clark... uh, Again, that's not to say that Jordan Whitehead doesn't have a role in the NFL. He does. He could just... At times, it's, it's it's all preference, right? But I think for me... One of the reasons why I viewed him as a frustrating player is because you would have those really high moments where he, especially against the Buffalo Bills for some reason, he's come away with some really big plays. He intercepted Josh Allen in 2022. He intercepted him three times in week one. But you would also have those the low of low plays where, you know, he unfortunately was hit with a a lot of touchdowns against in both the run game where he's trying to come down and and blast somebody and make the big hit and unfortunately not wrapping up. And the same could be said with his play in the secondary. So while Clark isn't necessarily as splashy as a Jordan Whitehead, I think he's going to be more consistent, which I like that. Like, give me the guy who's just solid and consistent and not like the player who's going to have these massive high of highs, but these also really low Moment. So the Jets and Robert Sala, I mean, he mentioned it. That's why I wanted to talk about it today. I think they've upgraded this defense and especially like the Hassan Reddick one is going to be really exciting to watch. But I don't think Jet fans are talking enough about the upgrade that Chuck Clark is going to be for this secondary and specifically the safety room. And then also, like I said, I just found it interesting. Salah's reasoning behind adding guys like Kinlaw and Leaky Fotu, because those were two more depth signings I, I was gonna say minimal but like that's that's harsh I don't I don't mean that I don't mean minimal in a in a bad way but that was just you know one-year deals or short-term deals for not a ton of money that are really instead more uh you know made for rounding out the depth of your your unit so I was, I'm curious to see how these three guys in particular that we talked about in this video play in 2024 but I want to hear from you guys down below in the comments what are your expectations for these guys let me know subscribe if you're new give the video a like before you go I'm Matt O'Leary and I'll catch you guys next time